my biggest recommendation to to organizations that are moving into the cloud or have moved into the cloud but are struggling with getting projects delivered that are making meaningful differences, focus a little bit more time on the upfront on first starting off with your need identification. And this is really like, Bruce, I, I love your term for this, uh, the art of the possible. Yeah. What is the entire scope of things that you could do and get that scope understood and then move into your business value proposition and validate those. To run tests with customers, with uh, individuals that are in the industries that you're targeting in order to, to get their responses. Because oftentimes there's a lot of learning that goes into startups, into businesses that are, are introducing new capabilities and new products where there's an iterative cycle. And if you can hit that in this early stage, by the time you get to production, you're not dealing with fire drills around, hey, by the way, we need these new five features so that we can sign this customer. And suddenly your entire team is just in this fire drill of, of trying to add in this that one more capability to get that one more customer. Yeah, I, I, I would so. add on top of that um, art of possible and maybe maybe even qualify that for, for part of everybody listening is, that, that's a that's a concept I've kind of run with, you know, and, and I leverage at Jamf too uh, pretty heavily on a daily basis. So when we're in that ideation phase, that need identification, the only the only ground rule it's really a brainstorming process, right? And the only ground rule we have is no constraints. Don't constrain the ideas. They're all good ideas. There's better ideas than other ideas, and let those come to, to the service. And the one that kills the ideation process is you come in. And I've seen this many times and, and we're, we're guilty of it just like anybody where you come in with, well, here's all the things we can't do and whatever's left is what we must do. And, and maybe that's a little bit of a Sherlock Holmes type of approach to problem solving, but, it, but you're almost, you're limiting market potential or opportunity by constraining too much early on. Let the constraints come into play when you start talking about step two, step three, right? Project definition, start to limit down the good idea is to let the best ideas come forward with constraint, right? But don't stop yeah. the ideation with constraints. And that's really the art of possible is like, think big, think disruptive, think what you can do. Yep. Now let's ground it to what we really can do based upon the limited set of options that we have available to us or, or potentially technology constraints, you know, financial constraints, whatever they might be, right? Uh, yeah. But don't well, that yeah. On one. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know, going going with that, like, so you're starting off with need identification. That is a big bucket, right? You mm -hmm. get into business value. And so now you're starting to eliminate things based off of what's going to drive our profitability, what's going to drive down our costs, what, what is going to give us a competitive advantage in our market. And so to your point, Bruce, by the time you get to project definition, project definition is really a, a process of budgeting, more mm -hmm. or less. I have these people available. They have these skill sets and I have them for this long. So what from this business value can I hit up or do I need to get another bucket of money? Do I need to increase my investment in this area because the business value justification is that good? Mm -hmm. And so like approaching it that way really sets you up where you understand exactly what you're going after. And the people that you're working with in that project definition as they move into POC has a much better understanding of what their objectives are, which means that the results of the POC dramatically improve because now the technologists understand how to drive business value. As they get into MVP, your product owners, your, your IT guys, your business guys are all working together and they have a much better idea of what's sellable now. Mm -hmm. And so MVP, they're able to cut scope more effectively because you've justified your business value. And they can use that as their North Star as well for defining what MVP really needs to be. Mm -hmm.